In this video, we're gonna take the equilibrium of a body under the action of a set of coplanar forces meeting at a point. Important rule, if a body is in equilibrium under the action of a number of coplanar forces meeting at a point, then the algebraic sum of the components in any two perpendicular directions must be vanished. To understand this, here we have a set of coplanar forces meeting at point O and acting at a body in equilibrium and the X and the Y axis represent two perpendicular directions then the algebraic sum of the components of the forces in the direction of X equals zero and the algebraic sum of the components of the forces in the direction of Y equals zero. If given the angle of inclination of the force to the X axis then the component of the force in the x direction is f cosine theta and the component of the force in the y direction is f sine theta. But if given the angle of inclination of the force to the y axis, then the component of the force in the y direction is f cosine theta and the component of the force in the x direction is f sine theta. So the component adjacent to the given angle takes the cosine and the other component takes a sign. Now an important corollary that gives a condition about a system of concurrent coplanar forces in equilibrium. The condition that the system of concurrent coplanar forces is in equilibrium is that the algebraic sum in any direction must vanish or must be equal to zero. Now example, in the opposite figure, we have four coplanar forces of magnitudes P, Q, P, Q, 5 square root 3 and 7 square root 3 Newton. They act at point O and incline to the x-axis by the angles whose measures are shown in the figure. If the set of forces is in equilibrium, then find the value of P and Q. Here we have a set of coplanar forces meeting at a point and they are in equilibrium then the algebraic sum of the component of the forces in the direction of x equals zero and the algebraic sum of the component of the forces in the direction of y equals zero before we start solving the simplest way is to resolve each force on the diagram the component in the x direction takes the cosine and the component in the y direction takes the sine so the force p inclines to the x-axis by an angle of 60 degree the component in the x direction is p cosine 60 and we have here we have a component in the y direction p sine 60 now q q has two components here we have q sine 60 because it inclines to the x axis by 60 degrees so here we have q sine 60 and in the negative direction of x, we have q cosine 60. Here we have to consider the direction of the force. The component of 5 square root 3 in the direction of x is 5 square root 3 cosine 30. The angle is 30. And the other component is 5 square root 3 sine 30. The 7 square root 3 gives 7 square root 3 sine. The angle is 30, so sine 30. And in the direction of x, it gives 7 square root 3 cosine of 30. Let's take the algebraic sum of the component in the x direction. If the force goes right, it's positive. If it goes left, so it's negative. So here we have p cosine 60 plus 7 square root 3 cosine 30 and minus q cosine 60 and minus 5 square root 3 cosine 30. Since the set of forces are in equilibrium, then the algebraic sum of the forces in the direction of x equals 0 and the algebraic sum of the forces in the direction of y equals 0. So the algebraic sum of the component in the direction of x equals 0. Let's simplify. P cosine 60. Cosine 60 is 1 over 2. So 1 over 2 P. 7 square root 3 cosine 30. Cosine 30 is square root 3 over 2 times 7 square root 3. 
then minus then minus q cosine 60 cosine 60 is 1 over 2 so 1 over 2 q and minus 5 square root 3 times cosine 30 so 5 square root 3 times cosine 30 is square root 3 over 2 this is equal to 0 now let's simplify so 1 over 2 p and plus square root 3 times square root 3 to be 3 times 7 to be 21 over 2 and minus 1 over 2 q then minus 5 times square root 3 times square root 3 to be 3 so 5 times 3 to be 15 over 2 we have 1 over 2 p minus 1 over 2 q equals 21 over 2 minus 15 over 2 is 6 over 2. Move it to the other hand side with opposite sign. So negative 6 over 2. Multiply the whole equation times 2 to cancel the denominator. So P minus Q equals negative 6. This is the first equation. Now let's add the sum of the components of the forces in the direction of Y. P sine 60 plus Q sine 60. And down it's minus 7 square root 3 sine 30 and minus 5 square root 3 sine 30. The sum of all the component of the forces in the direction of y equals 0. Now simplify. P sine 60. Sine 60 is square root 3 over 2. So square root 3 over 2 P and plus Q sine 60. Sine 60 square root 3 over 2 times Q and minus 7 square root 3 times sine 30. Time 30 is 1 over 2, so 7 square root 3 over 2. And minus 5 square root 3 times sine 30 is also 1 over 2. 5 square root 3 over 2. This equals 0. Multiply the whole equation by 2 and simplify to get square root 3p plus square root 3q equals negative 7 and negative 5 to be 12, move it to the other hand side to be positive 12 square root 3. Now divide both sides by square root 3 to get P plus Q equals 12. This is the second equation. Now we have two equations. Solve and simplify to adding the two equations. We, we get 2P equals 6. So P equals 3. So therefore P equals 3 newtons. Now subtract the two equations to get Q equals 9 newtons.